Hello everybody and welcome once again to All The Fabric 3. Today we are going to carry on with modern industrialization and hopefully do some electrical parts. So let's get started. Right, I've got stuff prepared. First of all, let's have a look at the recipe for the assembler, which is here. Um, so we need four rotor arms. We need analog circuits, which we've made last time. We've also got the basic machine, machine hole that we made last time and conveyors. So the rotor arms are made with um, tin cables. We made that last time. Steel rods, we've made those last time. And motors, we've made those last time. And we've got analog circuits, which we've also done, but we haven't done yet the piston. So the recipe for the piston was three steel plates, two tin cables, two steel rods, one motor, and one steel gear. And we need four of those. So I actually prepared that. So let's get those those done. Here we've got four pistons. For that, we need we can put these two pist these pistons in here, and that will make allow us to make four rotor arms like that. And then we need the two conveyors like this. And we need the basic machine hole, which is this recipe. So we've got all the bits we now need in order to assemble this up. So we can do that. So that the basic machine hole goes in the middle. Two conveyors go across it and the four rotary arms go in the, in the corners. And we get our assembler like that. And then we can go and claim the rewards for that, because this is quite a good reward for this particular one, where you get a block of stainless steel. Uh, stainless steel, by the way, is quite tough. If you have a look at how the recipe for that one is, you'll obviously need to get to ingots. Ingots we then start to make in the packer, or the vacuum freezer. So we have to get hot stainless steel ingots. And the recipe for that is stainless steel dust, which has been in the electric blast furnace. The or Cooper Oil called Catherine Oil, I'm quite sure about that one. And then, so we've got this stainless steel dust. And the recipe for that is uh, mixing those six iron, one nickel, one chrome, and one manganese dust. And that will give nine stainless steel. So it's, a, it's sort of a lot of st steps in order to get there. We don't need it just yet, so let's carry on. So let's have a look at the next quest that we want to do which is going to be the one below that here the electric blast furnace we get some, another a clean block of stainless oh, okay a clean stainless steel machine casing and a block of bronze pretty good ones so let's have a look at the recipe for the blast furnace so we need magnetic cooper cooper nickel wire so we also need a basic machine hole and a blast furnace. Those two are no big deals. So this one's probably a bit more interesting to make. Let's have a look at the recipe for this one. So we need a cooper nickel core wire put through a polarizer. Okay, so we need a polarizer and we need some cooper nickel wire. So how's that made? It'll be, it'll be made in the wire mill from one plate of cooper nickel plate, which will be a compressed ingot. So look at this. And then, so that probably be made in the furnace from cooper nickel dust as we see we're getting a lot of bits and pieces but basically that's just copper and nickel mixed together and that will give us two cooper nickel dust and actually not too difficult but just a lot of steps uh, as is all of the as is the case for most of these so i've got this bit all of these prepared so let's take these out of here like this and also let's come along here and get the polarizer so the polarizer is tin wire tin cable steel rods a basic machine hole and to worry so we, that's fairly straightforward to me so let's you can do control click on this and it's holding down the control will take us to the page of where it goes to in the book that's quite nice didn't know it did that so this one re requires so it uses electricity instead of steam which is good because last episode we made a steam generation uh, a steam turbine so if we put this on here in fact, we could put both machines on here. We've got the polarizer on one side. Oops, I'm there. Try that again. <laughs> um, oh, yes, and the assembler on the other side. We have the two things, and they should get power. He says, has this got, this has got units. It's got 32K of EU, so that's fine. Maybe I have to connect these with a the wire. Okay, let's make some let's make some tin cable i have also set up this uh a 
ME crafting table and some recipes. So I've got lots of recipes in here already prepared for the different bits and pieces that we're going to make. So let's make some tin cable. I've actually got two of those. I would like some more than two. So let's craft another two. So, that, so we basically need everything we've got. So we can just simply start that out. And then we'll get three of those. So maybe I can connect these machines together. I don't know how this works. We'll soon find out. Well, they're not connecting in. Do we have to do? Do we have to shift click these down like we did with the previous, with the wrench, or not? Let's have a look. Or maybe I have to connect them to a different part. Oh yeah, that works. Huh. That wasn't quite what I wanted. So I get that face on that. And then here. Well, it doesn't look as though it's connecting into the theme. Well, now I wonder if I connect it somewhere else. Let's try. Let's shift click these off. You should be able to shift right click these off. Let's put down a piece of wire here and see if we can click that into the machine. No, it doesn't want to connect in, does it? I wonder if this is the output side. Okay, if this is the output side, let's let's put this on the top. When shift right click it on the top. So that might now be a steam turbine. Let's see if the pipe will connect into that. Now, if I do this, come down here and see if we can shift click it in. Or right click it in, I mean, see if it connects. Yes, it does. Great. So that's how you connect these up. Well, that's interesting. So we should be able to connect these rest of these back onto here now without any difficulty. As you can see that the turbine turns around every time it needs a bit of power. So these cables themselves require power. Like that and like that. So now, let's have a look, let's get this in my hand. So this is now getting, it's got power already, fantastic. So we should be able to put these into here and then we should get some magnetic cupra nickel wire coming out of that, fantastic. And the assembler here is also ready, it's also charged up. A progress bar on here. Okay, so this one can take consumption is 8 EU per tick. Maximum overclock is 32 EU per tick. I'm not quite sure how we do that yet. And we can also extract items and we can do that. So what I was going to show you is how we can actually connect these to any interfaces, wasn't I? So let's go down. This is actually a good example. Because, oh, I didn't tell you that. Now let's start from the beginning here. For example, all of these machines here, I have got underneath um, some ME interfaces. Now, in order for the ME interfaces to work, you need the input and the output coming from the bottom. Actually, it's, the, it's only the output you need coming from the bottom. Well, let's, so let's just go down here one block. Break that off there, and then we should be able to get to these machines. Let's just get to these machines here, like this, and then we should be able to right click each of these mach machines, shift right click the bottom of it, and you'll notice it probably doesn't apply for that one, so we don't want to do the uh, turbine anyway. So then we can do, do that, and then that should be all we need to do. So let's just put like that. So if you now put an ME interface down here, they will connect in. Um, I haven't got an ME interface on me, so let's have a look. So now we've got a seven magnetic coupon nickel wire. Let's go and make the machine. Finish it off, so we then have the steam blast furnace. Oh, the electric blast furnace. So we've actually completed that. So what we can now do is put this down and see what the multi-block structure is like. It's probably going to be very similar to the other one. In which case, let's just put down a block off something. Slime block's always the one I like best because you don't, simply don't have to do anything special. So that shape is invalid as what we expected. So this one is always oh, quite a lot different, isn't it? So what does it need? So it needs these blocks here. Um, I have no idea what the other blocks are. So let's have a look on the book. And maybe with a bit of luck, the book will tell us what we actually need for this. So 
So it's um, the electric blast furnace. It's an electric version of the steam blast furnace. It unlocks new recipes. Unlike other multi-block machines, it's over its overclock is bound to 120 EU per tick by default. So it tells you about Kubernetes coils. And then it's telling us about oh energy hatches. So we need in this case we need low volt input hatches and medium voltage input hatches. Um, I presume it's got also got some stuff about. I don't see where it is to be done this one. Let's have a look. Configurable chest. Oh, I must be missing some bits and pieces. Tell you what, I'll be back in a second. But it's night time anyway. Okay, it's daytime again. So this is telling you what we need. Actually, it, didn't, it wasn't so obvious to start with. We need these Kubernetes coils, which are made from eight Kubernetes wires. It says the electric brass furnace is made of one layer of heat, fu heat proof machine casings, followed by two layers of Kubernetes coils um, and another layer of heat proof machine casings. We can do that. It's not too difficult. So let's get started. I already have the recipe for Cooper Nickel wire, so let's craft 128 of these. That's what I think we need. We need 2 times 16, uh, 2 times 8, 16, and then we need 8 times that, so it's going to give us 128. And we can let that start to work. So that's going to require, it's going to start putting things here in the steel compressor. In fact, it should be mixing in here we should be mixing yes that's right nickel dust and copper dust to make cooper nickel in dust which will then be getting smelted into here as you can see and then out of that it's going to get compressed to get it flat <laughs> the compressor should be here shouldn't it so that's making cooper nickel plates which are then going to be turned into wire fantastic so the next thing is the heat proof machine casing the, what i'm going to do is we'll go through the whole process because we've got to make invar plates so let's have a look at that i've got 16 blank patterns so that's fine so what we need to do is we go into the processing mode and what we'd like to make is these heat proof casings which is this one so these are eight large plates of that so we're going to need 18 of these times eight it's going to be about 136 something like that so we need invar plates Invar plates are going to be made from Invar ingots, which we are going to make from the mixer. So we need to smelt this. We need to furnace that. So we need the Invar dust. So the Invar dust we're going to make in the mixer. So we need two iron and one nickel to produce three Invar dust. So let's just click the plus button and we should get the recipe for that. Okay, so now what we're going to say is we want the recipe, for the uses of the Invar dust, which we want to put into the smelter. So we shall simply do the same thing again, and that will create another recipe. Now we need the use of this Invar ingot, and what we would like to do is we would like to stick it in the compressor to make some Invar plates. So let's click that one in. And it will be real luck today. All of these recipes are automatically going to the machine. And then the last one of these is the uses of the plate. So we need this one here. So we need a large plate, which is a crafting recipe. And also we could possibly put these as crafting recipes as well. So we've got all the bits we need for doing that. In fact, as it happens, I might as well do the, the Cooper Nickel one as well for that matter. So let's have a look at the uses of Cooper Nickel wire. We can have a recipe for this as well. So the, all I have to do now do is come along here and put these into the different, the right places. So on the terminal interface, a molecular assembler, I've only got, I've got enough for the tamping. So we need to make this one this one and this one are all assembly recipes, are uh, crafting recipes. Steel compressor, we need to make the plates so we can put the invar plates into here. Very straightforward when you know how. And then we need the furnace so we should be able to get the ingot. And then finally we're going to need the mixer to make the dust. So, so what now we can now do is we can now 
if this is still processing this is still processing making him uh cubinical wire as you can see in fact what i can do is i can wait a few minutes and come back in a second okay so while these are finishing off they won't take very much longer i'll show you the quick setup as what i did for this particular it's very small build from applied logistics i created an mfe here and put beside it two ultimate solar panels the mfe is then connecting to the energy accept so the only thing you have to make sure about is you get things in the right position so outputs will go into here which is then feeding the me controller i've got one me controller on this network it's completely separate from the other one here i've got a 16k crafting storage and a crafting terminal and that's basically it and the two terminals here and then behind this we have um three no four we've got four molecular assemblers if i want to extend it i'll just put another two on top of that but I don't think it needs to be much more, much bigger than what we've got already. So let's craft up these. So we need 16 of those. And we'll start that. So they won't take very, very much time whatsoever. Done already. The next thing we can do is we want to make these heat, heat proof. And we need 18. So let's craft up 18. And I'm missing some nickel dust. We need. Oh, I need another 64. That's no big deal. We should have plenty of nickel dust around. So while I'm here, let's just break this. It's in the way. Um, nickel dust will probably be in here. Yeah, good. Let's take two stacks of that and put that straight into the into the system. Oh, I guess I've got a drive in here. I'm not using very much of that. So let's have a look. 18 of these. And that's going to start to make these and we shall look at this it'll start to be smelt doing exactly the same as we did for the cooper nickel it'll be making it'll be converting this to invar dust as you can see and it's going fairly fast and then it's smelting invar ingots and then it'll be pressing those into plates and so on and so forth now let's have a look now at the hatches so we need some electric compressors so maybe in here we can see an electric water pump electric windmill oh yes here we go an mv electric hatch so this is going to be one electrum cable with one advanced machine hole we haven't done the advanced machine hole so far so that's going to be a challenge more electrum cables silicon batteries advanced machine casings uh, and electronic circuits so this is a lot more work to do we need analog circuits um lots of diodes which is again is electrum fine wire plates and this one is the one we can this would be nice because we're end dope silicon plates i don't think we can do yet because we haven't built the chemical reactor but we can however do the silicon dust silicon dust is made in the macerator no, we need some silicon ingots, don't we? How do we make those? Furnace silicon dust, okay. Silicon dust is made, oh, okay. In the EBF, so that's the electric blast furnace with coke and quartz dust. Oh, that's a bit awkward. We need to, there must be a way to do this before we get to that stage. Um, electrolyzer and Hopefully we don't need to do this. Emerald dust. Let's have a look at the recipe for the electrolyzer. Is that straightforward? No, we still need these electronic circuits and it's the diodes which is giving us problems. All right, I'll come back in a second when I've thought how to go through this. Well, I can't do MV stuff yet because we have to first of all go through LV. So we can make a low, um, low voltage which is a tin cable plus a, mach a basic machine hole the mv one is where we did we got st i got stuck on so we need uh energy input hatches into the yeah that makes sense into the blast furnace but i'm probably gonna have to put it here this stuff is in the way we'll have to move this out of the way i have a little color coding here this is the one that's actually finished it's all mined up have a look at this that would be the iridium small so this is just to indicate that this chunk is actually empty so there's no point in 
mining that up anymore. So I'm going to just prepare this area while these things are still making. As you'll notice that already we have made two of these. So let's do that and I'll see you in a few seconds. Well, while these heat proof um, casings are still crafting, let's have a look at making the um, input hatch. The LV input hatch is basically one machine hole, basic machine hole. Plus, so tin wire will make an LV energy output hatch. And we want the input hatch version of that, don't we? So I think you simply put it like that. And we get an input hatch. Was there an output hatch with a different recipe? So look, um, uses of those of the cables so if we put it on the left hand side we will get a input hatch and so there must be another recipe for this one well the other way around will make an output hatch <laughs> okay that's what i did very good but if you go back there where, where i was just a second ago you'll see the other electric machines because one of the things i'll probably be doing between episodes is to upgrade some of the machines so for example we've got an electric mixer an electric electric mixer we don't actually have it's not using the same block as previous so you're not using the steam one uh, to make the steel steam one to make this electric mixer it's a completely different recipe the electric packet is also the same thing so we're all using these basic machine holes and one of those is actually quite a lot of stuff so i prepared two while we were waiting Let's have a look at the recipe for this one. Um, sorry, let's craft one of these. We won't be able to craft it because there's no CPUs available. But you can see the amount of stuff that we need. So we need antimony dust, three of those, two, four gold, four redstone, two pieces of paper. So, so we craft some white copper wire. We need copper dust for that. And we need some fine copper wire. We need some. 33 steel ingots just to make one of these. That's quite a lot. 16 rubber sheets. Fortunately, we made those last time or the time before. Lead dust, coal dust. Um, tin cables, battery alloy curves, capacitors, inductors. And this is just to make one. As you can see, there's quite lots of bits and pieces to do in order to make one of these basic circuits. So anyway, let's carry on with this. I think that we should be able to connect the cable across here somehow. So I've got the input hatch now. Oh, as you can see, it highlights where I can put it. So I can put it in on the top or on the bottom. But, you know, it might well be worth putting it up here. So let's put it down here for the time being. And then we should be able to connect this across. I don't know whether these cables are dangerous or not, but they have got rubber sheets on them. So I guess that the answer to that is no, they're not dangerous so that connects into there without any problem and this one here we presume we have to use the wrench like that and of course it's showing what, what else we need in order to make this i do have these ready let's get some of these put down i think i'm not even sure whether it's worth doing this on camera because they're fairly straightforward We can fly and put up the rest of them. But actually, I have got a builder's one. So it's all okay. I've got a netherite builder's stuff. So I should be simply able to click this on here like that. And that will make the next layer for us without too much effort. So all I'm waiting for now are these. So I shall be back in a few seconds when we've got enough of these ready. Well, we're just about finished by the looks of it. Let's have a look. Get rid of that off again. Yeah, we should now have got enough of these. Hopefully we've got enough of these case heat proof casings. Where are they? Here, we've got 17. I did cut it down by one because we've got the input hatch. So let's have a look, see how this all fills in now. I should got two more than I needed. If this is actually connecting together, let's have a look. Well, it's not complaining about it. There's no red mark, so it's presumably it means it's working. And sure enough, it's working. So what can we do with the electric blast furnace that we can't do with the steam blast furnace? 
I'm not 100% sure, but I do know there are two levels. We've got the Cooper Nickel Coil level, and the next one up is Canthal, I think. So if we have now look at the recipes. Or the use of the electric blast furnace. So you can see we've got the Cooper Nickel tier, and then we've got this Canthal tier. We're not ready to do that yes, yet. And then there's a steam blast furnace. Which can make, okay, I see, which can make the same thing. So we can make cook steel, can make steel. So we can do a lot more than this. What's that one? Raw synthetic. Okay, so in the steam blast furnace, we've only got those two recipes. So in the Cooper Nickel one, now we can start to make aluminium into aluminium dust. Small aluminium. So we can start to do aluminium in this particular case. And chrome too, to make hot chrome ingots. And chrome dust is actually interesting. I think there's a recipe for this. Um, the Mesa Raider. It might not be. It might be um, cut down. Because I did notice. I know what it is. It's ruby dust. Look, the use of the ruby dust. So if we now put this into what, another one of these machines. The compressor. No, it's not that one. I've seen it compressing centrifuge that's the one we can put six ruby discs in there and we will get one crushed chrome dust and the uses of crushed chrome dust are basically one two of those will give three dust so basically that's what we're going to be aiming for next episode i think in the meantime i'm going to prepare some of these um more recipes that we can automate in here for the higher level stuff. Um, here I just put in a way to speed things up a bit. I was trundling over there and putting in blocks to melt them down faster. So I didn't have to wait forever. So that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something new. I have, <laughs> but definite. Anyway, until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.